So you mentioned uh, in, in our conversation the Caitlin Clark um, deal that's on the table yep. from Cube for the big three. Five million bucks for her to do that. Is there a way for her to do that and the WNBA, do you think? I mean, practically, probably. Right. Um, what I would say is she's a bit of a unicorn, so I'm sure she can make $5 million off the court as part of the WNBA from endorsement. She, she can do that, I you do think? believe she's that big an athlete and that big a star right now. And I think what she will embrace is she has ability to elevate the WNBA in a way maybe no athlete ever has at first. Incredible as some of these WNBA players in the first 25 years have been. And the, is, is Diana Taurasi the greatest women's basketball player right. ever? Caitlin Clark at this moment in time, if Diana Taurasi was Caitlin Clark, it would be Diana Taurasi today. But Caitlin Clark today, given what has happened in the last five or six years around women's sports and the energy and the momentum, she can transform that league. And the economics of that and the reputational benefit of that and the and the legacy part of that is going to be actually incredibly powerful. And I think she will embrace that and not just chase $5 million for the big three. I give them credit for making the offer because what it really is pointing out is Caitlin Clark's making more money as uh, uh, playing at University of Iowa than she's going to make as a rookie in the WNBA. She is? I oh. mean, you, you obviously are intimately yeah. knowledgeable of these figures in this world. So, I mean, absolutely. Now... The endorsements and some of the other things will sort of make up a lot of that. But absolutely, it's, look, it's why we represent Brittany Griner. It's why they all go off to go play in some of these other countries in China, not anymore, but Russia, not anymore, but Turkey and some of these other countries where women go play basketball is because the opportunity. And I think one of the things that the NBA deserves credit for is they've continued to invest in the WNBA. And I think you're at a turning point where the economics of the WNBA are going to be remarkable. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was misconstruing. I, yes, I understand she's making more NIL yeah. at Iowa than she would make salary with the WNBA. But, Correct. But, but I, is she, would, would yeah. she, she could make more money as a WNBA player than she is currently at Iowa, you think, in terms of off the I court? I think she might have more restrictions to the WNBA than she made Iowa. I mean, it'll be interesting, you know, like. No kidding. Yeah, I, I she won't. Look, because there's official sponsors and things of that nature. And look, let's be honest about NIL. NIL, you know, as an endorsement, there's there's economic rationale for a company to spend that. Some of the NIL money is not based on rational economics, on irrational excitement about University of Iowa. Yeah. Her. <laughs> and so it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting <laughs> switch to flip for her when she goes from being an amateur getting money for whatever to a professional getting money for very specific Okay. purposes and you know she's got to have a lot more obligations on her time just because though. i want to have your back when you say irrational you're not saying people are irrational for loving iowa you mean rabid you mean rabid love for <laughs> iowa hawkeye program non-economic <laughs> spending for players how about that <laughs> i don't want to get you in trouble uh, with the nation's heartland no, sir i think i look i i was great we, I know, no, I know that. We enjoy it. We enjoy but, but playing. Then, we enjoy going there in the Big Ten, right? I mean, come on, we're ready. Okay, we're we're <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> You've been in the Big Ten for two seconds. I it's, don't even think we're in yet, actually. I, just, I mean, I don't know when our first game. I think football's probably. It's because the Pac-12 is still the Pac-2. Got, the Pac, well, but the Pac-12 is playing the tournament. Got, correct. Playing the tournament. Correct. You had to rub that in. Both of our teams aren't there, so I, I don't understand feel... that. So, but so you so Caitlin Clark, because uh, when I was there. Um, at the combine in late February is when she uh, it okay. was apparent that she was going to be in a WNBA player, yeah, and that they're going to get her because they're in Indianapolis. They've got the first overall Correct. pick. People were jammed. They were psyched. They no, were they were fired up. They were talking about it. It's in remarkable. bars and stuff like that. It's remarkable. And she is the talent in the in the women's game has changed dramatically. By the way, the women's game is. You might be able to name more stars in the women's game today than you could in the men's game. Hey, man, I, I, if I was given a choice of watching South Carolina LSU, or, you know, in women's uh, compared to, you know, obviously a diehard rivalry right now in men's, I would choose the women's game right now. I agree. Now. I yeah. would absolutely want to I mean, watch. I can't wait to see. The, I hope they play each other again. You know, I would – my daughter, after she won, won I should say – uh, Taylor won her all-star uh, competition yes, her tournament. We went home and watched Caitlin Clark's first round game. And even, you know, her first quarter, she didn't do very well. No. So, um, you know, but think about, I mean, Kiki Rice and Angel Reese and the, and Paige Becker, these they're superstars. Mm -hmm. And if they all end up, the women's final four this year could be in some way, it depends on who the I mean, the men bigger than the men's tournament. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.